Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jono. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now today I head to Barista Supplies uh, in Knoxville, Melbourne, Australia, and I catch up with a mate of mine named Tony, and we talk about how flavour perception is influenced by which vessel you drink your beverage out of. Just so everyone's on the same page, this interview was filmed by me with my iPhone before the second lockdown here in Melbourne. Enjoy. All right, I'm here with my good friend Tony from uh, Rooster Supplies in Melbourne, Scorpi, Australia, whatever. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about cups. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a fair while. And um, now with Tony's background, uh, we're going to shed some light on the drinking vessels that we all have seen, used, um, and will use for coffee in the future. So, Tony, how are you doing? Alrighty, thanks for having me on. No, thank you for coming on. Um, obviously, as a roaster, or, or as anyone with uh, coffee knowledge knows, that uh, coffee will taste different out of a different um, vessel. So, uh, what can you tell us about some of the vessels here um, maybe we start with the glass one over there. That's a pretty, it looks like a stemless wine glass to me. Um, yeah, what, what would you say is beneficial for drinking coffee out of that cup? I think that where I come from, I've been an international wine show judge and looking at the wine industry in the last 50 years where we've come from using what's known as the pub goblet, that little rounded, thick glass, hardy goblet that doesn't break easily, mm. that you'll have had the house red from. Uh, to the point where now a lot of people who are wine drinkers will have either specific glasses for each wine style or at very least they'll have a higher quality uh, pieces of stemware at home to yeah. use. And it's because a different bowl and a different way of drinking will enhance different qualities in a wine and prevent things from being swallowed up or completely missed due to what you're using. And coffee is something that because... The third wave of coffee is a lot more recent than, for example, long-term wine drinking evolution. So we're still getting our head around what works best for coffee. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I've always drunk filter coffee uh, out of something like this. One thing we learned in the wine industry is that width in the bowl, low down in the bowl, is quite important. And thus also, uh, Jono's ceramic cup here does a fantastic job of that. And You'll see if you look at wine glasses, some people take that too far and you end up with things that look like fish bowls, mm -hmm. massive things to try and overdo this so-called enhancement. But there can be too much of a good thing and it just doesn't work. So there is a point where you get to that diminishing returns. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of, like wine, a lot of vessels we drink coffees from, we don't, we don't do so because it's the best vessel for it. We do it because traditionally that's what's always been used. Yeah. And so sometimes it's a, it's a case of getting people out of what they've always done and have and exploring. So yeah, to the, the stemless glass. Um, I must admit, I've always been a you know, glass and ceramic lover over, I don't usually get takeaways. I don't, uh, some places that don't do as good a job as, as your friends have done with this mm. wonderful vessel here. We've all been somewhere where you look at the cups and going, oh man, really we're using those? Uh, I've loved this for filter because it allows aroma to be centered, uh, you, get, you get the nose of your coffee, it can fill the room even more than it does when it's in a, a coffee mug like this. I personally don't like going and getting a filter coffee at a really great cafe and it's getting served in an old style mug. Feels like you're getting some Nescafe. Yeah, very yeah. functional. <laughs> I cannot uh, deny that. Um, and I'm not gonna not order a filter because they use it, but at the same time, it's, it, I like this because you're going to get aroma, um, we taste with our nose. People yeah. say that it's, uh, oh, when they've got a cold, oh, my taste buds are numb. No, it's because your nose has a dulled sense. Right. Uh, if you put a peg over your nose and a blindfold on, most people cannot tell the difference between rice and mushy peas. Right. Even though they've actually yeah. got different textures, not only different tastes, yeah. uh, because your senses are a lot in your nose. And this is what helps get a roundness uh, and, and allows your coffee to be defined. Mm. Uh, so in the same way that might be a decent all-rounder wine glass, it's very, very good as an all-rounder for filter coffees. Lovely, lovely. 
Um, so we don't really see filter being served in, in your standard kind of cappuccino cup like this one. Um, but it's also very just, it's just standard cup that you see in a cafe. So ceramic to me has a distinct flavor. Um, and it also, to me, it changes your experience of the texture of the coffee, um, generally in the way of the thickness. And um, so what can you tell us about kind of the thickness of ceramic and how that maybe could be a, a part of like changing the sensations that we see? Let's be honest, the, one of the key functions of this sort of cup is when you're having a flat white or a cappuccino, it aids in the presentation. Yeah. When you're pouring milk um, in something like uh, a latte glass or, or this sort of style tulip cup that's a bit smaller, 180 mil, versus this for, a, say, a flat white or a cappuccino, you know you've got an easier canvas to paint on if you've, yeah. if you've got some art on the top, um, which is part of the presentation. We, we get it. Um, also, if they're done well, if they're made well, it's a nice open, open vessel with a milk drink. It's going to be a nice, pleasant coffee. Um, it's not ma Because it's open like that, it's not massive for heat retention, but you don't necessarily want people to sit there forever and ever over it. Yeah. And if they want it hotter, as we all know, that's how they'll order it. So yeah. they'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so I think, yeah, obviously, for functionality, um, you, you're going to try and reinvent the wheel if you change that. So yeah, definitely. it does its job. Yeah, very good. Very good. Um, I always feel like with a tulip cup that um, it's basically to these days I feel it's kind of used more for stronger coffees because one it's smaller but um, you generally see magics being poured in, into these at the moment so I think um, I certainly feel that because it's, it's kind of just for the stronger coffees that it's not really a sensory style of, um, of cup it's again just another kind of functional cup well, if you look at 220 to 240 mil being a standard size for these, this is a 180 mil cup. You've got uh, a lot of other 180s. Acme have the 190 that also has this kind of shape. And I think that for those of us who would rather a little under 200 mil in our milkies, uh, especially if it's one shot uh, or your double riz, that's going to be a strength we like without having to order a... I order three-quarter lattes with a 220 mil glass because yeah. this is probably more my size. So I love the function of these for a milky when you know you're going to have that slightly more strength. Can't get away with it as a, as a anything but a small in some, yeah. you know, some places. The customers yeah. won't like it, but it's, it's uh, the function's obviously there for, for that slightly stronger and, and thus I've got a handful of those at home too. Yeah, great, cool. Um, I, I, I drink, obviously like being a roaster, I drink a lot of black coffee, a lot of filtered coffee, but Every time I'm profiling uh, a blend or a single origin, I'll do an espresso. And the differences with um, having it out of an espresso cup as opposed to a latte glass or, or any, anything else really, an espresso tastes more like an espresso out of an espresso cup, to me. Yes. Right. And I feel that that's because somehow the, uh, somehow the thickness of the lip um, texturally Texturally helps um, the feel and the, and just the flow of an espresso. But what would you say be the uh, the character of, of the demi tasse? What I love about this is here here's me saying I've got my wine background. So what would be really tempting for a wine person is to look at that and go, oh, it's a small ceramic cup. I'm sure using wine glass technology we can improve on that. So what would that mean? it'd mean you'd still have to come up with something fairly small. So typically a demi tasse is gonna be somewhere between 70 to 90 mil, give or take. Um, so a glass built for that purpose is still gonna be 80 to 120 at the most. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can shape, you can do all sorts of things, but you're gonna to go to a lot of trouble to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Um, now we know in coffee, uh, a vast proportion of the planet, a vast proportion of Melbourneites still want an Italian style, nice dark roast, where uh, even though as a milky, that's gonna cut through milk, it's also the way the average person who has a short black wants to drink a short black. We're not all specialty people who wanna see the fruits and nuances. Yeah. And so they wanna sit there with a the demitasse. But also if you have got something that's very nuanced and layered, 
uh, the demi-tasse still does a great job. And it's one where you, it's, it's not worthwhile trying to yeah, reinvent everything to, to go over that. What I especially love is not only have you got the demi-tasse with its shape and the fact that the, the coffee only gets about 40% full there, but you'll notice a sommelier never more than a quarter fills a wine glass yeah, when right. they're drinking themselves, ever. Uh, so the demi-tasse is under half full when you've got mm. a single shot in it, uh, which is why a lot of uh, people in the know, if they're going to have both sides and I'm going to have a double espresso, they'll actually use a bigger cup rather yeah. than fit it all in there. Yeah, yeah. And I love seeing as some places have got the demi-tasse that's got the more open flared lip. Mm -hmm. So you've got the two different ones. Uh, recently, uh, at a very good uh, opening of a, of a Melbourne cafe where the two sides of the, of the shot, the shots were served, one in a traditional demi-tasse and one in the more open flared demi-tasse. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to see the compact acidity and flavours. Yes, you don't get all the open flavour, but you get a beautiful compactness of structure of the coffee right. in the demi-tasse. And yet in the open, more flared little 90 miller, you actually had these more fragrant fruits. But it doesn't mean it's automatically always better because mm. whilst it's flowing and opened up more, you sometimes do miss that neatness yeah. bang that you get. A bit of body. Uh, yeah, yeah, the body you get in the standard demi-tasse. That's, that's really good. Um, lastly, the humble takeaway cup. Yeah, being a barista, we've always, uh, we're always striving for consistency, right? Um, this is actually your best friend for consistency, uh, in my experience especially, because there's such a small opening, such a small opening on the lid that it targets a very specific set of taste buds. Um, and yeah, well, <laughs> that's why basically it's gonna taste the same to the customer for the most part. Um, what would you would you say that there is room for a freakishly weird open mouth to take away cup? It's a great question, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what, you, you had got a great thing when you said consistency, because you can go to ten cafes and they use ten different cups, ten different glasses, but no matter where you go, an eight ounce or a twelve ounce, for example, takeaway is going to be in a similar cup with a similar opening. So at three different places, three different takeaways, you are going to get an ultimate comparison in a yeah, sense. definitely. Uh, you get what you know. Look, obviously this has got to be functional. Mm. Uh, one thing that this cup will never need to do is be manufactured so it fits in the center console of your car when you're commuting. Absolutely. Whereas this bad boy has to. It has to be something you can hold, you can walk with, you're not scared of spilling it. Thus it is what it is. And thus why, uh, all the popular uh, reusables that come out actually become a better version of this rather than going to something completely different. Mm. But it's a wonderful question you ask because despite the fact that it's made more of you know, this material as opposed to really cool ceramic or glass, um, the takeaway cup, be it reusable or be it uh, disposable like this, there possibly is room to get a bit of a bowl going. But I guess also we have to understand that the vast majority of these that go out are again milkies. Yeah. And yeah. Um, for all of my love and pomposity over the, the shape and what we can get out of different shapes, at the end of the day, when you're having a, a lovely milk drink, you also need just heat retention and yeah, consistency. definitely. Yeah. Very good. Uh, well, that's about all the questions I have. So thank you, Tony. It's been very good. Really good to see us, Amelia's. Uh, take on, uh, on on coffee and uh, it's good that you're working in the coffee industry now. I like it. Oh, I like it too. I enjoy it. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jono. Thanks a lot. Just a quick note to say a massive thank you to Barista Supplies. Uh, check them out on all the socials at Barista Supplies. So thank you very much, Tony and Alec, for letting me in to your place of work. Cheers. Well, there we go, guys. That was the interview. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.